Sweet potatoes are one of my favorite vegetables to grow through the heat of summer. Hot weather and drought conditions are no sweat for these sweet berry treasures. There are a few tricks that can help you get off to a strong start. Let's go over my six tips for how to grow sweet potatoes in a raised garden bed. Make sure you stay tuned till the end. I'm gonna bring you an update of just how these sweet potatoes have started growing only two weeks after they've been planted. What's up everybody? This is Scott from New Garden Road. I'm here to inform, inspire, and elevate you. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and spread the word. While you're at it, subscribe and get notified for more gardening action. Here's tip number one, sprout your very own sweet potato slips. When we plant sweet potatoes, we're actually planting what's called slips. These are sprouts from mature sweet potatoes that have gone on to form leaves and roots. You can sprout your own sweet potato slips in about eight to 12 weeks. Should you decide to do so, make sure you allocate about that much time ahead of your target planting date. Otherwise, check out your favorite local gardening center or one of the many online gardening retailers. Here's tip number two, soak your slips in seaweed. Seaweed stimulates root development and helps those slips get established. Today I'm making a solution using the MaxiCrop Soluble Seaweed Powder. You'll need to use one teaspoon of the powder per gallon of water. This stuff does require a little bit of work to mix together. I like to use a mason jar with a little bit of water in it to help me dissolve the seaweed powder. Then I'll add it to my watering can and fill it up to the right proportions. The soluble seaweed powder is really economical. I think it's a better buy. You're not paying for the shipping and the weight of the water that's being transported and the concentrates. So if you're eco-conscious or economically minded, check out the soluble seaweed powder from MaxiCrop. Here's tip number three, prepare your planting bed. Sweet potatoes need a rich and well-draining soil with a depth of eight to 12 inches. If you have rocky, shallow soil or a heavy clay soil, consider building a raised garden bed. Fill it up with the highest quality garden soil that you can find. If you already have a planting space or a raised garden bed, you're gonna wanna start by removing any weeds or mulch and irrigation lines. Lightly open up the soil with a tool such as this garden weasel. Otherwise, try using a sturdy garden rake or a four-tine cultivator. Now it's time to add some organic dry fertilizer to my raised garden bed. Today I'm using the Sustain brand 464. That middle number corresponds to flowers, fruits, and roots. The sweet potatoes that you're going to be growing are true roots, unlike the Irish potatoes which are actually enlarged stems. Now I'm going to add about two inches of high quality compost, work that in, and tidy up my planting space. I'll go ahead and replace my drip lines and it's time to plant. Tip number four, make your own spacing grid. I like to loosely base my plant spacing on the square foot gardening method and I allocate one square foot per sweet potato slip. Using my homemade spacing grid, I'll make a divot in the center of the square, flip it over and repeat the process until I have the entire bed marked to my desired spacing. I like to dedicate an entire raised bed to growing sweet potatoes. They vine like crazy and they're one of my favorite crops to grow. If you're planting in rows, you can plant your slips eight to 14 inches apart. They can also be interplanted with other higher growing crops. A lot of times I'll grow some zinnias or sunflowers on the north side of the bed or in the center of the bed. And the vines may even be trellis to save space. Base. Tip number five, dust your sweet potato slips with soft rock phosphate. I'm using an organic soft rock phosphate with an NPK of 030. This stuff really aids in the establishment of new plants. While I was preparing my soil, I soaked my slips in liquid seaweed. Now that I'm ready to plant, I'm gonna allow them to drain for several minutes. After that, I like to use my hori hori knife to dust the soft rock phosphate on the roots. Now it's time to get them in the ground. You wanna plant them at a depth of three to five inches. If your sweet potato slips aren't that long, you wanna just make sure you've got three to four leaves above the soil level. Once you've got them set, firm the soil up gently around each slip. Here's tip number six, drench newly planted slips with liquid seaweed. After soaking those slips in seaweed and then dusting them with soft rock phosphate before planting, a drench of liquid seaweed is the final touch to promote root development and healthy plants. Make sure you water your newly planted slips immediately after you plant them. Give them a deep soaking of water and go ahead and add two to three inches of mulch. Now I'll apply about three gallons of liquid seaweed using my watering can. 
After that, you wanna water your slips again to push that seaweed into the soil further. All right, y'all, here are two bonus tips for how to grow sweet potatoes. Installing a soaker hose or drip irrigation is absolutely essential. Even though this vegetable is drought tolerant, yields will be significantly larger with deeper, slow soakings. I typically run my drip irrigation for about two hours, twice a week or more during the hottest and driest months of the growing season. Bonus tip number two, feed those veggies so they'll feed you. Be sure to side dress those sweet potatoes every four to six weeks with a high phosphorus fertilizer. I also apply a liquid foliar fertilizer every week consisting of Neptune's Harvest fish emulsion, liquid seaweed, and molasses. This is not overdoing it. These are hungry plants and feeding them will increase your yields. Here is the progress report for these sweet potato slips that I planted just over two weeks ago. They are already growing vigorously thanks to the bed preparation, soaking them in liquid seaweed and dusting them with soft rock phosphate. It's important to note that sweet potato leaves are edible and highly nutritious. Enjoy those tender new leaves raw or with other mixed greens. Sweet potatoes will continue to grow as long as the weather is warm and most varieties will be of harvest size in about 90 to 110 days. And that's going to be about the time that you dig up your buried treasure. And that's how you grow sweet potatoes in a raised garden bed. So those slips in seaweed, now you plant them in the ground. Woo! That's the street sweet Whoops. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now check out some of these other awesome gardening videos on my channel, like this one for how to grow your own corn in a raised garden bed. You can grow your own food. Keep it organic. You still there?